Yeah, good morning everybody. Um, thanks for Tom and Ellison. I think you know it's a really interesting research you have done over there. And that kind of kind of linked to what we talk about today, you know, because we talk about um, using voting pots. Um, voting pots are a sort of electronic device uh, which you can use to collect immediate learner response. And you hopefully you will have a chance to actually try them out in a minute. Okay. So uh, I'm Joyce Chen, I'm a teacher trainer and also I'm course director for an SS course. And Ozan here, he is an ESO tutor and course director. Um, we are from the College of West Anglia, based in Norfolk and also Cambridgeshire. Um, I will start off giving you a little bit of the uh, sort of background about voting pots. Um, at our college, we purchased the voting pots for a number of years, but we found out that uh, the voting pots are underused. People don't actually use them, and particularly lecturers. So we would like to find out you know, why the voting pots are underused. So our research topic is designed to investigate how often the voting pots are used by teaching staff in the technology department. As it's a small scale research project, so we can't roll it out to the whole college. Um, all the details about our project can be access on Padlet and also on our poster over here. So I won't go into the details as such. Um, so basically um, in terms of the background of the voting part, we want to find out how often the tutors actually use them and also we want to find out the issues uh, for the lecturers to use the device. So that kind of links to the tutor's motivation and their confidence over here. We also want to find out what kind of training modes and resources are required to encourage the tutors to use the pods. And finally, we would like to find out the impact on learning, teaching and assessment. So I will start off the methodology. Always like my assistant today, so. <laughs> Um, in terms of the methodology, we, we conducted the whole project in three stages. So we start off the initial stage, we spoke to the technology department, we built a dialogue to find out if they are aware of the voting parts which they can use. And then we identify a focus group of six participants. So basically we asked for volunteers. And we then identified what kind of training resources and delivery are required for the six participants. And throughout the whole project, we gave them the support, we had regular contact with them, and at the end of it, we collected the feedback and reflection from them. And of course, as researchers, we kind of reflected on the whole journey. Um, in terms of the results, um, I won't go into the whole details, but we found out the reasons why the tutors don't use them. <laughs> Talking about technology. <laughs> well, that's fine. <laughs> the main reason is um, basically the tutors, um, they, they feel that, you know, um, they don't know where to find them, and also they feel they don't have enough training about using them, they don't have the confidence. Okay, so that was the main reason. And in terms of results, some of the results are very interesting because I think they could relate to the teacher's perception. So, for example, some tutors feel they are not for my practical session; they are only for academic subject. Okay, and also some tutors feel that you know, um, basically questioning is not part of my session. So over here we generated some very kind of interesting feedback from the tutors, you know, how they think about technology and how they should use them in a certain way. So um, moving on to uh, the conclusion, um, I will just summarize them. Um, the first point we found out is we definitely, we are definitely sure that voting parts are not fully utilized. Uh, the tutors don't know where to find them, they don't know how to use them, and they don't know why they need to use them. 
And moving on to the second uh, key point is um, basically for the tutors, they find that they haven't got enough time to prepare and practice. And that is probably the very sort of general comment you get from tutors. You know, when you talk about using IT or technology, they feel I don't want I don't want to use them and I'm not sure, you know, it might go wrong. And some of them even mentioned that it could cause student behavior issues, you know, it could cause problems. And uh, lecturers also respond that they need more training sessions and support. Um, However, the whole project has definitely encouraged the tutors to use them. And the feedback we receive is they feel the whole process of supporting them, helping them out spontaneously, they feel they have built up the confidence to actually use the pots. And we also chose the easiest way to show them how to use them. So rather than going through the very complicated procedure, you know, how you say it all up, and what might go wrong, the tutors actually find it very easy to use and some of them actually use them regularly. Um, but there's one barrier, one difficulty remains the same, which is time to prepare resources. The tutors feel they need time to think about how I am actually going to use them in my day-to-day -day teaching. In terms of recommendations, um, we have identified some agendas. So, for example, uh, when we try to set up the training sessions, we should have taken into account, you know, what is the best delivery mode. Should we use it, on, use it online or use blended learning or should we arrange one-to-one -one or in a group? So that kind of information we didn't really find out. But that is something we want to take forward because being in the teacher training department, that's what we do day to day. And the second point is, in terms of using the pot, we need to find out you know, how we can make them more accessible. And plus, these days, with very limited budget we have, not every department has the ability to actually purchase the pot. And as you might be aware of, there are a lot of applications we can use, there are online web-based, free resources, so a lot of the technology we are trying to use has moved on. You know, they are free, they are accessible, you don't actually have to buy them. Uh, but what we want to do is we have the equipment here. You know, why don't we use them rather than waste them? Okay. So the final point is, again, we need to find out how the learners, over here I'm talking about students rather than lecturers and teachers, what is the response from the learners? That part we didn't actually collect the data, you know, throughout the project, and I think that is something we want to look into, you know, see what the learners feel about using this kind of voting device, or, you know, answer the questions spontaneously, because we look into um, online sort of online resource like Socrative and so on, you know, how can we use them more sort of interactively, and also in terms of tutors. Again, that goes back to probably your project, you know, we don't want to make ourselves smart, you know, we are the masters of technology, whereas what we want is, we are the same, because throughout the project, I learned about how to use a Padlet, to start from zero, and then, oh, yeah, that's great. So that goes back to the motivation, you know, if you think about teaching and learning, how can we help our learners? So again, that goes back to, you know, what we talk about, digital learning, and what um, the fail tech report mention about how can we use them rather than trying to be you know all superior about you know this is technology we know how to use them and you should use them so um, that was pretty much our project and what I would like to do now is hopefully <laughs> it works <laughs> uh, we only bought eight pots over here so I'm afraid you have to share uh, we have a couple questions here if we have enough time and then followed by Q and A. So if you could turn it on, this is not much. It's all turned off now. So we don't want you to miss out at the back. <laughs> Um, yeah. If I explain to you the first question.
question is very straightforward. All you need to do is, it's a bit like your mobile phone, okay? You've got the buttons on the sides. So, right, so my first question is, have you ever used voting parts or similar devices? Now, hang on a second. <laughs> right, so now you should have the answers on your screen, yes or no. So all you need to do is to press yes or no. So Yeah, press the button on the left and right. between our presentation in terms of that um, the tutor confidence and not on the assumptions that go with it and how the support and you know and how it works and the purpose for it. So I suppose my question is, is since you've shown you've given that support and they're feeling more confident in using it, have, have they found a purpose, the, the tutors, for using this technology? Are they see are they are they keen to use it now and see the benefits for the for the learners and for them themselves? I wouldn't say everybody yeah. because um, Again, the tutor's response, you can see the details. Four out of six say yes, you know, they, mm -hmm. they feel that they're relevant using them. And the, the feedback from the learners are quite positive. However, a couple of uh, tutors still feel that they, they are not sure, you know, how they are going to use them in their day-to-day -day teaching. Yeah. And again, they mentioned that they still need more kind of support, mm -hmm. sort of regular contact with them. So I think that's the key when we talk about sort of helping the teachers to use technology in, in teaching and learning because a lot of tutors feel that very often we deliver one-off session. You know, this is how it works, go away and use them. Yeah. But there's nothing we follow up. So that's what we want to do this project because we want to find out, you know, perhaps what we need is a regular kind of contact with them. And of course, you know, we are also talking about using um, champions. We need tutors to kind of roll it out and tell the other people. Because even within our <coughs> teacher training team, there are only four of us. And we do try very hard to keep up with you know, the tutors and encourage them to use it. But what we need is we create this kind of technology friendly kind of environment and group to actually help each other out. So you don't feel kind of intimidated, you know. If I need some help, I have to go to that department. Whereas within your own area, you have people already have the knowledge, already have the skills. 
and they have the subject knowledge as well to kind of support each other. So, yeah. It sounds like we call our digital nurse very affectionately, who is actually Tom, is that <laughs> in the teacher education team, who is the person there who can provide the support. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think yeah. it's very important. For can I ask yeah. a question? Sure. Uh, this, this sort of equipment tends to be quite expensive and does date quite quickly. Yes. You know, lots of cupboards full of these. Yes. Have you experimented with using Socrative and then the technology that people have got in their pockets, yeah. their mobile phones? This is something we want to kind of find out in, in the next stage. Because right. as I mentioned, you know, they can be out of date very quickly, yeah. like what you said. But there are a lot of free apps yeah. and the students have their phones. Yeah. So why do they need to carry these or the teacher have to carry the pot with them? Yeah. So yeah. exactly. Yeah. 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 So what we want to do is obviously we have equipment. We want to use them. But I think very soon we have to start looking into using kind of different ways of using the similar kind of technology but in a more kind of mobile way rather than you know, carry the pots. Yeah. Yes. I think that's uh, a problem with those. The quicker that you get staff more integrated with technology, mm -hmm. the quicker those will become obsolete. So as soon as you get them used to those, yes. they're going to look for the next thing that's, yeah. that's easier, more uh, widely accessible. So the more successful you are, the quicker the death now will be moving <laughs> <laughs> into the technology that yeah. you're starting off with. Yeah. And unfortunately, we are living in this age that everything just moves up so quickly. So we almost have to kind of try to catch up with them. Is it something about being able to swap your knowledge so that you see you can learn to use this thing and you could transfer that to using a phone as well? So it's exactly. the resilience to be able to take that to the next piece of technology that comes along? Yes, yeah. So that's what I was saying that we, you know, we kind of related to Absolutely. your project there, Absolutely. you know. Yeah. And that is something perhaps, you know, we didn't put in our recommendation, but that is something we will take forward. And throughout the whole project, we noticed that, you know, teachers really need that kind of confidence and then sort of think about, you know, how they can, you know, moving on without feeling kind of under the pressure that they have to catch up with the skills and so on. But they have to see the value of it and how they can actually use them. Got the, it, it's not really a question as much as an right. affirmation. We've got the points of down place as well, and staff, they've, they've sat in the cupboard for years because staff have been using mobile technology mm -hmm. and Kahoot mm -hmm. and Socrates mm -hmm. have just really taken yeah. off, off across the college. Somebody started using it in a pocket, and it was like this touch paper that's just gone yeah. across <laughs> the college. Yeah. And the students love it because it's an opportunity for them to use their phones, mm -hmm. which had a blanket ban on, so now the phones are coming into the classroom and you're learning to use them responsibly. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that is, again, yeah, there's something in, within our college we need to roll it out because a lot of children still have that kind of thinking that mobile phones shouldn't be used in the classroom. Yes. You know, and that is a barrier, but at the same time, so, so difficult to kind of, not changing people's perception, but it's trying to sort of nudge your teachers, you know, just try it out a little bit. Well, but manage it, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. But you're right about needing a drip feed approach. Mm -hmm. A one-off and then that's it, go do. Mm -hmm. doesn't work. No, no, no. no. Yeah, well, thank you, Yvonne, it's such a shame. It's so interesting and very interesting how the two projects actually mm -hmm. got so much that actually they inform each other almost, don't they? Yeah, and I, yeah. I know I'm thinking about it's not just about our learner resilience, it's about ours. Isn't it, as practitioners, really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can use a tool that you've got to actually promote, and that's absolutely mm -hmm. wonderful. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you.